they do that? Do you also eat peanut butter and jelly with crust? I do not eat peanut butter and jelly. I'm a grown man. Almond butter? No, I don't eat almond butter. What do you think I am? Some weird health nut? (laughs) I saw some... uh, Don't even get me started on running. Why? One of these days... One of these days when we... uh, when we have nothing to talk about, I'm gonna I'm gonna really talk about running. Well, can this I bury, this health can I, craze of running. Can I bury cyclists then who are cycling on? Uh, oh, don't even don't even get started on these cyclists that take up the whole road. I don't hate them, but I well, hate it's like pearls before I swine. Hate Anybody's this ever law. seen that comic book? That's why I look at all cyclists now. So anyway, let's take a quick look at these shows because that's what people care about. Mm. Christian versus Kazarian. So there were a bunch of good matches on AEW. And here's, as I mean, Dave talked about this for like an hour last night, but here's the the 10 second version. There was a bunch of matches that were good on AEW, and there's often a bunch of matches that are good on NXT. On AEW, the good matches are all different. On NXT, the good matches are all the same. And then you have bad matches, which are different because they're bad. So Christian and Kazarian was a very good match, but it was totally different from another very good match on the show, which was the... Uh, Lucha Brothers and Laredo Kid versus Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers. Really good match, totally different. And then we had another good match on the show, which was the main event, which was Arcade Anarchy. Uh, Miro and Kip Sabian versus Orange and Chuck. Excellent match, also completely different. So I was watching the Christian match, and I was just thinking, you know, there's a lesson that we learned this year, and quite frankly through an entire presidency, I might add, and that is that it's better to underpromise and overdeliver than to overpromise and underdeliver. And this Christian fella, he's got a gimmick. Outwork everybody. And I mean he was listen, don't get me wrong, match was great. But he did not outwork everybody. And so if he had not told me that he was gonna outwork everybody, I probably would have been way more impressed with his performance. I was still really impressed, but you when you overpromise then you almost inevitably underdeliver, and I don't think that Christian underdelivered. I mean, it was it was pretty much exactly what I expected it to be. So it's a good match, and he won. He said, "Kick your ass." Why? How could he be burying him for his? I didn't bury race? him. Yes, you did. He said he was going to outwork everybody. Did he outwork everybody on that show last night? Well, he started. No, Look, he did he, not. He didn't get the chance to. He started the show. He they thought went he had, to 20 that point, minutes and kicked out of a bunch of near falls. He had just as much opportunity as anybody. To that point, he was outworking everybody. And you had Frankie Kazarian. You know, if this was if this was in Japan, one, it would have gotten seven stars. But, of course, he also would have lost because he was coming back from seven years off. And then the guy comes back from yeah, seven years off. he did a great job. Oh. But you know what the problem with his catchphrase is, Mike? What's that? Besides over-promise and under-deliver or under-promise and over-deliver? Because there's no one right way to work. So when your gimmick is that you're going to outwork everybody, what, you're going to outwork Laredo Kid doing all of these crazy high spots? You're going to outwork Miro putting somebody through a -a whack-a-mole game? Like, it's just all different. So it's a weird catchphrase. I'll outwork everybody. You'll outwork them with headlocks or whatever? I mean, he did. Are you taking this too literally? No, that's his catchphrase. It's on t-shirts. So uh, wh- you're blaming me? That's his catchphrase on a T-shirt. Now the match was great. Don't get me wrong. Why does everyone have to get mad about it? I'm just telling you. <laughs> there's no right. There's no one right way to work. Hey, that's are you picking nits on poor Christian? No, I'm here not on people. poor Christian. I thought he did oh, an excellent who? job. Seven years. You want to see my first match back after seven years? His was ten times better. Maybe twenty. I'm not burying no, the guy. We don't. We don't need to see that. Did he outwork the Legos? We had Cody QT in an exhibition match, which uh-huh. was notable because it was the first no contest ever in the history of AEW. There was no finish. Because but does it count? QT knocked out Arn. Well, it was an exhibition match, so it doesn't yeah. matter. He yeah. knocked out Arn, and then his diabolical crew of students, Aaron Solo, Anthony Ogogo, and Nick Camarado, three bad dudes, beat up all the baby faces, and this is a heel turn, and now he is on his way. As so we got... The Camarado, and Gogo, and who's the other dude? Solo? Yes. They got to do something with O's at the it end. He's not Solo, by the way. He's in a, he's in a group. Solo. Ah. Mm. Okay. They announced that Ethan Page and Scorpio <laughs> Sky are now a team. 
We had Moxley beating Cesar Bononi, or as he called him, Caesar Bononi, which I laughed at. <laughs> he beat this guy. It was a fun match. Choked him out. in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, I liked it. I like this J.D. Drake, too. I've mentioned that multiple times. Hell yeah. I'm very yes, excited sir. for his match next week. He's, he's my man. kind of wrestler. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.